Well, hi, how are you? Mike Freddy here at Escape Maze down in our shaft, our haunted escape experience. We're going to give you some examples on how to make some cheap decor. This is styrofoam painted on, and uh, these are some wooden doors that I made just to uh, escape or get out of. So in the next hour, we're going to be explaining on how to make some of this cheap decor. I'm going to next show you some more examples before we start into the, the good stuff. So we'll move on to the next room. Oh, you're back. So this is another example of cheap decor. What, what I've done here is um, taken some compound, drywall compound, and put it on there, made it all rough, but then made mortar joints around it. Some of it's drywall compound and some of it's styrofoam. You can find the styrofoam in here. Of course we can. There's one. There's a bit of a styrofoam on here with a little bit of compound on top of it. And this is another sort of uh, cheap way to make rock. This is obviously a different color. We made it dark in here. We got the lights turned up so it's a little easier to see. But uh, in during the haul, we, we carefully light it. And I can give you an example of that. We, if we want to uh, try and make this wall stand out, we'll put a uh, light up high and give it some three-dimensional depth with shadowing, if you can see that. And then I'll give you another example of lighting for spotting. So if, if, the dark, if the room's fairly dark, we'll get a spot and we'll spot either an individual prop in the room. So you have to look at her at one point or her at, or uh, spot the uh, the lock so you can see to get the lock off so we'll, we'll have a spotlight on the lock so that's uh more examples uh, we can get started at uh showing you how to do it let's get going hi right, back again so i brought you into this room just to show you some examples of different types of styrofoam this is a different type of styrofoam than this and then we've also got a a different type of styrofoam on the corners because of uh, durability. So the harder stuff on the corners, the cheaper stuff in the middle, and it also uh, designs and uh, can create different effects with different types of styrofoam. Also, carving into the styrofoam is kind of neat. So we can carve figures into the styrofoam hands. Also, using uh, a spray foam pipe, you can do stalactites on the wall. Different fast ways to make fun decor. Let's go on to making decor. Hi again. We're outside now. We're going to start designing and making of bricks or stones for our stone wall. What I do first is I design a pattern. So this is sort of a rough pattern to give me different dimensions. So I'm going to stick with some certain size dimensions like 12 by 16 or 12 by 12 or 12 by 6 or four by six, so they all should fit uh, evenly and, and match up like a puzzle instead of having odd sizes like seven inches or four inch or three inches or stuff like that. So I started out with a pattern and then we trace our pattern onto our plywood. So I'm gonna pick a uh, 12 by six inches like that. And I just wanted to show you, this is a, uh, a cheap piece of plywood I picked up at the hardware store because it was broken. So it was already pre-split. Pardon me? MDF? This is an MDF board, mid-density fiber board. And it was on sale. It was 10 bucks for a 50 some odd dollar sheet. Because it was pre-split, but I've used this pre-split to my advantage. I'll show you in a minute. So we will now cut it out. I'm going to cut an uneven line. I don't want a straight line. I, I want a rough, jagged edge. Not rough, but I'm going to I'm going to be going in and out of that line to give it a, a different type of sculpt edge. That was a bit wavy on the line, so this is one cut does two blocks. 
or stones for my project. So that's how we do MDF. Now, if you hadn't uh, come across some cheap plywood like me, and you have already have some scrap pieces of MDF, uh, you can make those bricks the same way. This is uh, smooth both sides, but uh, we will take a mallet and a chisel and start splitting it ourselves. <coughs> Follow the crack, and if the crack opens up somewhere you don't want it to open up, just chisel it to where you want it to crack. So we just made another brick, fairly quick, or a stone, I should say. And then with these stones, now I can take my harder styrofoam. This is a blue styrofoam. It uh, closed cell, so it's. Uh, a little harder than the white stuff. The white stuff's flaky. It has a different texture altogether. So with these patterns now, I can use these on my styrofoam. I'll take it right to the edge. Pop out a stone, uh, brick, uh, block. Cut the corners down a bit. So we have another stone. Just like that. That's how you make the ones out of styrofoam. You can make one out of the white styrofoam. Here. Before you know it, we're mason. Look at that. Stone mason. So, from these, I will take a red angle grinder with a sandpaper blade to it, or a sand wheel, so I can find it or uh, ease the edges over to make it look more like a stone than, than, it's, than it was cut out of. Fingers. Just take all the rough edges off and do the same with the weight. What did you say? What, what was that question again? Oh, why did I do? The face of it. Well, I'm just trying to make it look a little rougher and not as smooth. And then we'll uh, go to the second stage and we'll plug something else in. And if we uh, use this in a well ventilated area, because you know it does give off quite a bit of gas, but all we're trying to do is melt the top surface a wee bit so that it becomes hard and rigid. It'll take the paint a lot better when it's rigid. I don't know if you can see that up close. But we're also giving it some definition by heating and going in the cracks. So now it's, it's a lot harder. So it won't scratch as easy. And if you want to, you can also go in a second time with the grinder. Play with it a bit. If you heat for the second time, it'll give you a different type of ridge or different type of effect because we're heating a different area. So that's how you make the blue ones. And that's uh, the wooden ones. 
this styrofoam will actually shrink quite a bit. So you have to be careful. It'll give you a different pattern. It'll give you more of a sandy looking face to it. It also takes all the tool marks off. You don't want those tool marks. So it's giving you a different type of pattern versus the blue one. I don't know if you can see that. So this has a more of a stone looking face to it. And this one will have more of a rougher and smoother finish to it. So that's what we do to all of these stones. That's how we make those. Then we'll move on to the next step. So we're back. Um, now I've done some blocks uh, installation ahead of time. So go back to my drawing. I was sort of uh, what I wanted the pattern to look like. You don't have to follow the drawing completely. As you go, it's reforming. You also don't want to have too many vertical cracks. So you want to split these cracks up or two horizontal cracks. So you don't want too many long lines. You're trying to break up these long lines because it'll look too much like a, well, that's just me. I don't like it now. You want to try and break it up to make them look pretty neat. Or, uh, random, I guess you would call it. So for the styrofoam pieces, we use an adhesive. We're going to cover the brand name up. So, it's okay. so we use a, a foam-based adhesive. You should use the foam-based adhesive because it's not as uh, critical to the styrofoam. So it'll, it'll bond to the styrofoam and it won't melt the styrofoam. And a lot of other adhesives will melt the styrofoam. So you put a little bit of heat on it, stick it on. I'm going to uh, show you an example of installing a wooden one. So I think the wooden one's going to look nice here. We don't like that. We don't like that better. You pick out what you want. Put a little um, adhesive on the back. It could be a PL premium or something like that. And then staple it up. So, if we come to the edge here, we just cut the knife, break it off or a corner, you know, to uh, end the block, and then, then we have a gap here and a gap here. You want to sort of make a big gap to, so when you go to paint or put any kind of uh, routing in there to make it look more authentic, you'll have room to do that. You can bring them up tight, a lot of uh, older tassels in. Wales, let's for example, or England, have the tighter joints to them. So it depends on what age you want, what you want it to look like. I googled a bunch of different types of stone walls, and then that's what the, sort of the pattern I stuck with. I don't have a piece of paper with me, or I didn't make a copy of it, but I got a copy up here just to remind myself what it's supposed to look like, as well as for coloring too. Pick the color. And so I've, I've made grout joints just to make them look, make it easier down the road to put the grout in there. If, if you do it tight, what ends up happening is you end up having to do more cuts because we end up with a, a smaller, or like an odd piece here. Whereas if you do that, it's more uh, random. Nice. So what are we doing next? Oh, I got an example over here on some, uh, this is a piece out of the haunted house. So this is the uh, compound. This is the compound one. I don't know if we need to show you how to apply comp drywall compound to the wall and then just go around it with your finger and then sort of make a rough texture on the surface. But this is one of our earlier experiments with styrofoam and compound, whereas the compound doesn't seem to uh, have the durability for escape rings as, as uh, this styrofoam with just paint on. So this is an older styrofoam piece of soft and uh, I put compound on it but it's breaking off a little bit. We reuse our wall props as well to so take them out <laughs> and reinstall them somewhere else. I think this has been in three different rooms in three different locations and as well as an example for it every time I do uh, something like this. 
So we'll move on to stage four. What do we have now? Five? Okay, now we're going to build a door. Are we excited? Yay! Hear the cheers, the laughter. <laughs> Woo so I've picked uh, a 32 by 80 door, standard size. And I'm going to manufacture the pieces here and put it together for you with affordable, cheap lumber that I've found. So I had bought up a bunch of these pre-cut pieces from a lumber store that was throwing them away. So I've gone really cheap anyway. And uh, it was already pre-cut, but if you have some scrap lumber, you can trim them down to whatever width you want, and then we'll distress them. So that's one way to distress. You can also put a fancy finish on it with uh, a saw, a chainsaw. What I'm going to do is uh, I want this to simulate a cross hatching of a large, you know, milling machine. So it's going to be some nice cross hatching of the chainsaw. I'm just going to lay it just right on the edge there and run it down. That gives you some cross hatching, so when we go to uh, do some more finish, that'll look awesome. Um, if you don't have a chainsaw, you can also just use the right angle grinder. That puts a little, uh, little bit of cross hatching in there as well. So after I've done all the edges, and then I put my cross hatching on, I'm going to put a nice finish on here to the burning uh, section of this thing. I want to do that in a well ventilated area for, for good reason. Burn the edges on the surface. We come back and put our pieces together. So I've already started this, so I'm going to install that there and then we'll have a door. I'm using drywall screws because they're black headed and they look old. So I, I've already pre screwed a lot of this, but what I did is I laid it out on the boards underneath, and I'll show you that, and then uh, cross squared it to make sure that it is a square unit so it'll go into the opening real easy. Turn it over and show you the back side. So I've, what I've done is put two cross members on and then a cross, or a, I guess they're going across, two cross members and a crosser. I don't know what they call What are these things called? You know, comb. So I went to the mist tint aisle and picked up a can of a quart for $3. It's gray. Mix it with a little bit of water. And then with the water, now we can just uh, put some paint on that. How much water and paint? You mix it to your desire. So, you know, I'll, I'll dip a little bit into the paint, into the water. It might be too bright. So you can put a, a wash over top of that. And then let it sit. And then you can also, the longer you let it sit, the more the paint's going to stay. But that is sort of what a wash looks like. So, and if it's not suiting your desire, you can add more later. I would 
wash the whole thing with this color and then I can add another color to it if I really wanted to. Or if you want it darker, just add more paint and less water. That'll give you an older looking door. Plus, it'll take the black, the black soot off it too from the burning. It's got, for example, that black soot. But when you, after the wash, there's no black coming off anymore. So nobody's going to get black on their hands. I basically built this door out of scrap pieces that I, that I had sitting around. So that's uh, the front and the back. So you can tell the different, I don't know if you can tell, it's like a golden look to it. And then this side has more of a washed barn gray look to it. So if you wanted more gray on there, just keep adding more paint. Keep that, keep, keep changing that wash. You could, it doesn't take long to wash the whole door. So you add more layers to it if you want. This has got sort of a cobalt blue or gray to it, so it does look like that old fashioned door. Well, things have progressed along quite a bit. Uh, we have put a base coat on everything, started to decor a little of the, a few of the stones, and now I'm going to show you how to put a base coat on and decor up the stone. So I'm just using a mist tint from uh, one of those big box stores. Not gonna tell you which. They didn't pay me. So I've just got a little foam roller. Actually, it's a little hairy roller, not a foam one. And uh, the reason I use a little one is just for maneuverability. I can just go over top of the styrofoam, just like if it was a wall, not a problem. And then go around the edges. That's the base. Now we want to maybe change colors. Leave that color in the tray, doesn't matter. you in a minute why I wanted to change colors. So we're going to put a little darker stone on, a little base, darker base, which doesn't look much different than the MDF. I do want to seal this MDF so that everything will stick together. There's these little flakes, if these flake off, just pull them off. But uh, we want to seal all that on. So now that I got this roller, I'm going to change colors again. So I want to take this color and add it to the first color. I've squashed all the paint out of it, so there's no paint left in it. It's a very, very dry roller. I can lightly go over top of this one. Now it's just a very light touch. It's not very heavy. You're going to have to think again. <laughs> or three layers of different colors that I want to put on this thing. What color now, Fred? Darker? Darker. I like going dark. Good. Good. I think I better go gray. I haven't really changed the tray. I don't need to change color. To clean the tray out at all. So now that I've got some gray on here, 
gray and beige mixed together. I'm going to lightly go over top of one of these other ones. I don't know if you can see that somewhere. But that's just adding a little more depth of color to that stone. Maybe I'll try it on the bigger one. If I try it on the bigger one, it'll give you a little more perspective. I don't know if you can see that. This adds a little more depth. Well, now what are we going to do? We need to uh, put another color on that one. I'm going to switch to the brush. Well, all I did is get a little brown on there. Let's lighten up slightly. Let's touch, just touch it in spots. Keep turning the brush around so you don't have a repetitive pattern. While I got this dark color, I might as well put a little, a little bit on this stone as well. And these are just my techniques. They're not any one of an industry standard. I'm not saying this is the only way to do it. Now, I'm going by the pattern that I've picked out as well as the colors that I've picked out. And these are almost the same colors that I've picked to suit my room. We've got one more stone up right there. Oh. Got more of that chocolate brown. Uh, this is just right on top of the old wet paint, so they're blending together as, as I'm putting them on as well. And if you find you didn't like something, you can always put that gray back. You can put other colors on top if you want to hide a mistake or if I've added too much color. Keep in mind, you put too many layers on and turn muddy, it would almost go gray. But most of it, it's, uh, most of this has a base coat, which I, I have three different colored base coats, and then I use those same colors to put the top coats on too. So it all, all color matches. Can do other things too. I've got some green. I can go in with some green and get some moss on there and try and make it look like it's older. Depends on what scene we're doing. You know, this is a right now we're just building a castle wall. We could have mold on the edges, which we could do green, but uh, and then we'll move into some grout. So there's different ways to do it. <clears throat> we could just paint the grout lines, which is acceptable. Um, I'm going to do something a little different. I've mixed up some thin set mortar, just a regular thin set mortar, and uh, I wanted to add some color to it, so I put some some grout in it. It's uh, quarry red clay color, inless with my grout or with my uh, thin set mortar. So I mixed the two together. So I'm trying to uh, get some color with the, what I'm trying to do is get a, um, a slurry. You want it 
fairly wet. The only reason I want to do this is because I'm looking for a gritty, sandy type of finish on my uh, mortar line. I want to add a little more water to that. I want to make it cleaner. So it's, it's now liquid enough that I can use it to paint my. I'm just going to go in. I want a lot. Just on the tip. Do the whole thing like that. I mean, painting it's perfectly acceptable as well. Would you put another coat on or? On this? Yeah. I don't think so. Depends how. This will dry a lot lighter. Oh, will it? It'll dry hopefully with that red foot color. Um, it'll dry like a cement colored gray. Mm -hmm. To our conclusion, I was just about to set up my door and notice that uh, I needed to touch up some burns. So you can use just a portable torch. To do any spot burning or burn the whole thing, you don't have to have the giant torch. A little more affordable. Not that too bad. And I stand it up. So that's our completed project with the door, castle door, and castle wall, full, full finished wall. So I'd like to, uh, that's, that's an exclusion of everything, isn't it? I don't think we missed anything. Oh, uh, you'll have to check with your local um, fire marshal on um, top coding this with a fire recording if you, if you need to in your area or not. The styrofoam, I can keep the styrofoam up now and return, but. I'd like to thank Dave and Lisa and Lee uh, Kong for inviting us to demonstrate today. Hope you enjoyed yourself and I hope you learned a bit. Keep building. Hi, I'm David. And I'm Lisa. And we're from RoomEscapeArtist.com, the hosts of Recon, the Reality Escape Convention. This was one of 15 talks that we put on at Recon Global this year, a digital convention for the escape room and immersive gaming industries. For players and for owners and everyone in between, they gathered on August 23rd and 24th of 2020. We're releasing all 15 of these talks about once a week over the coming months so that they'll be accessible to you. To find them, you subscribe here to the Room Escape Artist YouTube channel. And if you're interested in more information about Recon, go to realityescapecon.com and subscribe to the newsletter. We put on Recon completely for free because we didn't want there to be financial barriers. We are, however, supported by our Patreons, and so we're thankful to those who are already supporting us, and if you have the ability to, uh, to, to support us right now and 
you want to and you like what we're doing, we would really appreciate it. People who back us get early access to these videos along with a whole bunch of other perks. That is the Room Escape Artist Patreon page. And if you're enjoying these videos and this industry, please support the creators in the space. Play their games in person or virtually. They're doing so many innovative things right now, and we hope that you'll enjoy those.